lagi Cukulah kau dapatkan Well, here's the thing, though. Okay. Don't okay. say anything until okay. I put your name. Okay. Put okay. Your name up. Okay. So I know you're gonna go on a rant, but let me just say your name first. <laughs> okay. All right. Yep. Five, four. We're starting now. Do you want it? Is start? the cameras on? Everything's been on. Everything's on. You ready? Andre. This guy's foreign, man. <laughs> he looks it. Yeah. Look at him. Look at him. He's just he looks like a guy who fucks in the library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, I've been there. His dick smells like truffle oil for some reason. <laughs> oh wow. Black truffles. You know, Fr- were you from France? Spain. Spain. Whatever. España? España. <laughs> España. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Five, four, three, two, one. We go together like Shama Lama Nama. Dimini Ding a Dong. Remember the grease? Yep. <laughs> Remember the grease at the end? Mm-hmm. When they were freaking everyone out? At the end, when they're celebrating at the fucking amusement park or whatever? Or when they're all friends already. Yeah, they're friends, and then they start s- singing. Oh. Something just came out of my mouth. Was that a tooth? <laughs> what? Yeah, something flew. So I just flew out. Of, like a tooth fell out. It's all right. Know, it's not no. a tooth. It's not a tooth. No. We, so at the end of the... <laughs> so at the end of the... So at the end, it's the end, of, end of Greece. <laughs> when can I start talking? No, you can't. You can't. You can't. So at the end of Greece... <laughs> at the end of Greece... <laughs> I know. I know. You can't. It's not a part. It's not a part. I gotta talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. My 99-year-old grandma. You get, you, you get some rule, dude. Just hurry the I know, fuck up. Not, I know, but I have to do a whole intro, okay, bro. Okay, okay. What go. the fuck, dude? So the end degrees. Um, Give me know, a pen and paper. <laughs> yeah, go get, get get him a pen and paper. Um, you know, just start from the top. You gotta start from the top. Go ahead. Five, four, three. <laughs> We go together like shama lama lama, 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 lama ding a dong So at the end of Greece, dude, so you're, as an ethnic person, when you're watching Greece and the white people start s- speaking in tongues, because that's what it is, mm-hmm. speaking in tongues, when they oh. go shama lama lama, right? Because it doesn't make any sense. I Googled it. <laughs> and, um, and you're watching it, and you know when you're in the theater as a kid and people are like singing along and like dancing, and you just you get scared. Mm. As a minority, you get real scared with white people when they start doing stuff like that. You know, when I went to a church once too, my I, I know to go fuck. When I went to a church once, um, my friend, I had a fucking uh, redheaded roommate who was a Christian. Did I ever tell you about him? Who? I had this. I forgot his Aaron is his name. Okay. A lot of redhead redheaded dudes named Aaron, Aaron in life. If you don't know, FYI, you know. But uh, he took me to. Um, a church, his church, and they started speaking in tongues, and I ran out of the fucking church. It scares the shit out of me, bro. You should have started singing Greece. Oh, maybe that's what, <laughs> that's what I should have fucking done. done. <laughs> You're so bright. Did they learn? You learned that in Second City. Do you have to, man? Yes, you yes, and to. bro. Hey guys, Danny <laughs> and Sandy got back together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start over again, dude. If Jesus, you don't the fuck, Bird, I come will on. Start over again, all right. So, um, I want to say welcome to the podcast. Um, I have George in the... Hey, love you, man. You're a good guy. You look handsome today, man. Wow. Wow. Earlier, what did I say earlier? What did I say, Mate? What's your name again? Andres. Andreas. Andreas, what did I say? That look, He looked good, right? Yeah. Yeah. We got fucking you know, Mozart in the jungle over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little composer. Look at him. He's With a this, maestro. Yeah, he's got fucking... What's that fucking... The, the, paint, the painter that was on that seven... You know, that... The, Bob Ross. He has Bob Ross's sweater oh. on. Yeah, it looks good, man. I have my beautiful girlfriend here. Thank you. I, I woke up a little, um, not in a good spirit. Feisty. And I, feisty, and I apologize. Because I missed my therapy. I slept in. Oh. It was a whole thing. We got flat face flat. What yeah. up? Love your sister, Gabby. I know that. But I love you too as well. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I want to introduce our guest, um, you know, he calls me. Well, no, he doesn't call me. This guy, Adam, calls me and goes, hey, can you do Bert's, Bert's Netflix show? You know, and obviously I'm going to go, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Not because of Netflix, but because of this next man. Um, he's doughy. He's a forest person. Um, and I'll tell you just a little thing. You know, we saw each other's bodies that, that day when I worked with him. I saw his asshole. The asshole. Alafresca? Ne- Alafresca. Fresh. Uh, right off the market. Oh. Right? <laughs> right? I saw his fucking the hole. I saw the taint. Mm-hmm. I saw his sacks. Both. 
So both sacks. Wow. I saw his dick, mm. and I saw all the hairs and the surrounding areas that have been growing. It's a lot. A lot. Mm. It was like um, Picasso shit, man. You know, you see a Picasso painting, you're like, "What the fuck is that? What?" You, 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 it's like uh, abstract shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Basquiat shit. Mm-hmm. Um, his dick is gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Mm-hmm. It's like human perfection. In fact, I've only seen dicks maybe a thousand, two thousand, three thousand times, <laughs> five thousand times. You know what I mean? In the in live, live, I've seen it in photographs millions of times. Mm-hmm. Because I'm a fucking scientist. You know what I mean? But I've seen many dicks. I've seen Dalia's dick. Mm-hmm. I've seen uh, Santino's dick. Polly Shore's dick. But this guy's dick, man, perfection, dude. And I want to give him, and he is promoting something, and that's why he's here. Bert Kreischer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's start off. Let's start off with a tooth. <laughs> so my Nana's 99 and she's, you know, still there. She's still there. Yeah. And we're all hanging out. And all of a sudden she's at the table and she goes, uh-oh. And a tooth just came out. And we were like, oh, fuck. Oh. Like literally watching the wheels come off. Oh, like, oh, that's, it's like, well, you, you don't go to the dentist for that. It's like, I got a year left. Yeah. All right, let's go to the lemons. The lemons. Well, well okay. first of all, people don't know about the lemons. So. Oh, I'm promoting my Netflix special, Hey Big Boy, streaming currently on Netflix. Nice. Check hey it Big out. Boy. Hey Big Boy. Check it out. Netflix, Hey Big Boy. 50 Cent uh, stole, a, stole a joke from me already. Did he really? Ooh. Yeah. Oh. I, but, you know what's weird? I, I can't say that. I can't say that because, obviously, we we're pre-recording this, but um, I they released my trailer for my special, mm. and one of the jokes in it, I say... Uh, I say my I have one uh, my wife won't have sex with me when I'm sick. Mm. I'll definitely fuck her when she's sick. I don't care. She's like, well, I don't want to get you sick. I was like, we'll practice safe sex. She's like, you're gonna wear a condom. I was like, no, doggy style. So you cough into the wall. <laughs> and then Fifty Cent memed that today and sent it out. Oh. Coronavirus, safe sex, facing each other's uh, safe sex, uh, doggy style, and everyone started hitting me up. Now here's why I don't here. Now here's what's now this will parlay into lemons. Okay. Yes. Okay? They're like, call him out, call him out. I'm not going to call him out because I would assume first that I am just not original <laughs> as opposed to 50 Cent took the time to meme out and steal a joke from me. Does that make sense? The timing yeah. is and, a little bit conspicuous. It, it's a little weird, but but I go, you know what? Just shut your mouth. You, know, I always hated those young comics. They're like, uh, dude, you'd, you'd be sitting in the back of the room and they'd be like, uh, fucking Chris Rock stole my joke. And you're like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 like maybe you guys had the same idea. Yeah. Uh, like, let, let's there's just... something called linear thinking. Yeah, l- parallel thinking. Whatever. <laughs> Please don't ever correct me on my show again. But yes, parallel thinking. And so let's, I don't, I don't. Li- what's are they different? Yeah, parallel and linear. Li- are they the polar opposites actually? It, it's not even in the same. You can't even compare. Oh, anyway. they're not opposites of each other. It's they're circular not... thinking. Circular. <laughs> I just say say circular. I have circular thinking when I have OCD. I definitely have circular thinking. I right have OCD there. too. Do you touch things? Uh, coronavirus hasn't been good for OCD. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 oh, wait yeah. a second. This guy with OCD is none afraid of coronavirus. Because, in fact, because- he's never licked his hands more in his life. I was like a fucking cat. I just lick my paws all day. Fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say something about the corona corona, okay? Mm-hmm. I know you have to say something, but I said something about the corona corona. We got to get right? back to the lemons. Okay. Well, we will so- get to the lemons. Let me, let me just finish with the corona corona. Right? Yeah. This is not a PSA. Do not listen to Bobby Lee about the corona. I'm just going to say this, okay? All right. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't people, know, I, I love this talk. I don't know what to do. How, 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 how many people um, have coronavirus? Over. No, in China, in China, China, China. China. Yeah. 75,000 or something. Okay. So let's just say that I don't, I don't think that's the truth. Okay. That's, that seems like a stretch. I feel like it's, I th- I they're like underreporting. No. I feel like 7,000. Why would China out themselves in that way? They would be underreporting. Yeah, yeah, not China would, yeah. China would be like, it's well, not even that if, bad. Even, even, yeah. even if it was 75,000, all right? Even if it was, all right? Let me say something, okay? Um, even if 75,000, um, is, is that um, how many Chinese are there? Billions, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> that's, like, that's, like, that's like having, that's, it's like going to a beach and going, there's one grain of sand on this beach. Yeah. That has coronavirus. Then you don't understand why why a flu season exists then. It's not that COVID itself is going to wipe the face of the earth. It's just that it's going to inundate the healthcare system and cause it to crash. And we're not prepared in any capacity, in, a, in, a, in the United States at least, for a pandemic like that. Because we don't have enough ICU beds to accommodate a, a massive amount of severely ill people. Especially if they need to be intubated. 
It's just going to crash us. Every it's not going to kill home, all of us. Every time I come I've home, you're like, wash your hands. Speak smarter about it. Yet. <laughs> yeah. Everyone else is like, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I was at I was at the Rangers game, and they wanted to put me on the big screen and have me chug a beer. Yeah. And so they come over and they're like, hey Bert, if we throw you on, the, we're gonna put you on the big screen. We chug a beer. I was like, I don't have a beer. And everyone's like, oh, hey everyone around, pour your beers into a cup. Mm. Bert will kill it. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Like, are you sure we want to do that, guys? Don't we have a pandemic going on? And they're like, no, no, no. Everyone's like, yeah, poor load. I killed like nine different beers into one cup. Everyone, I was like, okay, I definitely got it. But I didn't get it. So well, this, this one's yeah. pre. This podcast is pre-recorded. What if, like, when this comes out, ninety percent of the planet is dead? What if I- it's impossible because God. there's going to be a, a, at some point it's going to level out when fifty percent of the population gains immunity, right? So that's when it becomes technically an endemic, which is it goes from an epidemic to a pandemic. With and like H one N one, it will become part of our regular flu season. But it does not mean that we are prepared for it. It does, how do you? How are you so smart? I have to date a dumber girl. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, it's like, I'm dating I've, too n- smart. I've never seen someone speak more eloquently about this on the news. <laughs> she's a fucking nerd. On the fu- <laughs> you're, she's a fucking nerd. That's why, Bert. This like I, you, I've never. She's so sexy when she goes. No, it first becomes an, an epidemic, epidemic <laughs> then a pandemic, and then an endemic. The question isn't necessarily. <laughs> I'm like, well, holy shit. Holy shit. This is all night long, by the I've way. Also- <laughs> all night long. I have to listen to this shit. Well, it's because here's My where- wife sounds dumb as fuck now. <laughs> it's because I live with a living, breathing Petri dish. <laughs> like, he just is gonna kill this entire family. <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy talk. But anyway, let's go to the oh, okay. let's lemons. Go to lemons. Yes, so, lemons. Do you have to so tell the lemon is... story first, and then he can do it. So tell me about the neighbor. Okay, so I have a neighbor a couple a couple houses down. <laughs> we walk past it with my friend Shandy, and it has, I'd say, maybe 3,000 lemons, fully ripe, yep. ready for ready to be picked. So my friend Shandy's like, oh, let's knock on his door and ask him for some lemons, which I think is a reasonable thing to do. It is a reasonable thing to Very do. Very neighborly. We have a fig tree that grows into an alley, and and homeless people harvest our figs that grow into the alley. Okay. And mm. they, like, take all the figs. And so when you go to take figs, you're like, oh, we've got more on the other side, and the other side is empty. Yeah. Okay, we keep going. <laughs> so she... <laughs> Circle thinking. Circle, Circle thinking. thinking. Circle thinking, guys. She politely knocks on his door. And says, excuse me, sir, can I have some of your lemons? And he says, first, actually, he waits 20 seconds. And he's not sure if he even wants to give us one lemon. And then he says, yeah, you can have two. This was months ago, right? Within everything now is dead and rotten. He has not picked a single fucking lemon from his own tree. Yeah. And he didn't want to give us any more than two. That's it. That. It, that is fucked up when you hear it on paper. Now, you ready? Yeah. So There's no way to argue that, by the way. This is, there's no way to argue that. I can, but I, what I can do is I can empathize. I don't, whatever this is, and I wonder if people will hear this that way. So we have, um, we have a big party one night, and, uh, and for some, whatever reason, no one drank beer. And so we had a, 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 a whole igloo freezer cooler full of beer. Mm. And it, where it was placed, it, it had a towel over it and no one saw it and so it sat there forever. So then all of a sudden one day I go, oh shit, this, I open it and all the water smells like shit mm-hmm. and all the beers, labels are faded. And so I take out all the beers and then I go, I'm going to throw them away. I'm no one's drinking these fucking beers. I put them in the alley, put them in the alley and I no sooner leave my house to go to Starbucks and I start walking by the alley and I see a homeless guy grabbing my beers. And my immediate instinct was, hey, don't take my fucking beers. But I didn't want them. I didn't want them. <laughs> and but you put I, them in the fucking and alley. And I put them in the alley for someone to take. And as he was taking them, I was like, I, oh. my <laughs> instinct was, don't take my beers. Yes. You're de- I, I didn't want to see it. Yeah, Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah. I didn't want to see them. Mm. I would be, I we our neighbor has lemon tree and I always... I always say to him, hey, George, you mind if I grab a lemon? By the way, I've literally described my where I live to a T. If you're looking for a lemon tree, a Starbucks, and an alley, you're like... <laughs> and a half-full fig tree. And a half-full fig tree, you're like, I think I know where Bert lives. <laughs> um, I always ask him if I can have his lemons. I would never take a lemon without, him ask, without asking him. But he says, take all the lemons, because lemon trees have tons of fucking mm-hmm. lemons. Yep. But he always says, take the lemons, and that's why I grab two for you guys. Well, thank you. Tell them what I do at a restaurant if I pay. Mm-hmm. So if he pays, 
Um, let's so I'm taking out some people. Let's, th- let's say you ordered a $65 steak. Tastes mm-hmm. delicious. Yeah. Um, you only eat half. You want to take some home to your kids. And I'm paying for it. If he's paying for it, you're not allowed to take anything. I like that. <laughs> I like exactly, that a lot. Exactly, right? I like it's that mine. a lot. It's mine. I like that a lot. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, oh I, I, wish, know I wish I had I'm those right. balls. <laughs> I'm right. Oh. I'm right for once. Are you going to want this wrapped up? And then Bobby just goes, yeah, one box. No, I leave it. I don't even take it. In fact, I've done this before. I leave it on the table. It wasn't I've no one can take it. I've taken the box. <laughs> I've secretly packed it in a box. And he's done this to, to a sandwich of mine. Looked at it. Smashed my sandwich. So it's now all over the place and inedible. Yeah, that's hilarious. And the next time you pay for the meal, you can take it home. Do whatever you want with it. That is so brilliant. Thank you so much. Man. I love that. I pay for a lot of meals. Yeah. And there is a point like where it's like, we're, like I was with some friends the other day and they were like, uh, we were getting, we were leaving and they were sitting at a different table than we were. Like we had two, we have two tables. And so we had two different bills. And I got up, I was going to the bathroom and they looked at me and they're like, hey, do you want to, like uh grab this and i was like oh yeah yeah i'll grab it and i was like then i was like looking at all their food on the table and i was like i guess i guess i just i didn't even i didn't even share the conversation i didn't i just, I just paid <laughs> yeah. for them to eat i yeah, didn't get yeah, to enjoy yeah. the like hey, yeah 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 god i would do that in a heartbeat let me ask you a question if you're eating this yes. is a problem of mine if you, last night okay i went to a place and i Met a couple of people and they're like, let's go eat. I know that some of these people have no money, mm-hmm. but I want to eat a great place. Yes. Right? But I know that they don't have any money. So when I tell them, I want to go here, you can feel them go, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right? So I always pay. Oh. Right? I, I have not. How, what do you do in that situation? I, I, I took my tour bus driver and my tour manager. This is not this tour, but the previous one. We were in Columbus, Ohio for the night, and I said, hey, let's go out to eat. And they were like, uh, okay. And so I took them to uh, Smith & Walensky's, really nice restaurant. And the tour bus driver's like just looking at the menu, and he's like, well, I don't, these, are, these prices are out of my, my price. I go, I'm paying. And he goes, looks at me, and he goes, you're paying? Well, then I'm getting the most expensive <laughs> thing on the menu. And I was like, this tour bus driver was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> he really was. You know what he said to me one time? He goes, we're in Boston. He goes, uh, hey, one time we're eating breakfast, he goes, I'm going to ask you a question. Feel free to say no. And I went, uh, the answer is no. <laughs> I go, I'll tell you what, don't answer the question. Yeah. Don't answer the question because I'm going to, if you're thinking I'm going to say no, I'm going to probably say no. And he goes, well, I want to run it by you. And I said, don't, <laughs> don't run it by me. Yeah. Just know that the answer is no. And he yeah. goes, I was wondering if we could bring my wife on tour. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? You want your wife to be on the tour bus living with us? You fu- Hey, I want my wife too, asshole. Yeah. Oh, fuck. One time he says, he goes, he goes I, I was wondering, when you're in Boston, you got two shows there, two nights, or four shows there, you got two nights. Yeah. I was wondering, I could just take off and go home early, you get a hotel. And I was like, yeah, yeah. no, I've already paid for my hotel, it's the tour bus. Yeah. I'm not going to pay for that, and then all- it was the most. I hate people like that. Wait, so do, you, do you, okay? So there's two types of people: people who are so inf- afraid to impose, and people who just shoot their shot. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could shoot my shot. I am so afraid to impose. Same. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid to ask for anything. Yeah, me too. Oh. I, 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 I hate asking for money. I hate asking for help of any kind. But sometimes you have to when you're up against the wall. You know who shoots her shot? Who? Amy Schumer. Mm. Boy, she shoots her fucking shot. She asks. Like, no, she just she's just direct, up yeah. front, tells you what she needs. Yeah, you know, and Scientologists, I wish I are, Scientologists are like that too. <laughs> no, they are. are no, they, they, really? shoot, they shoot. They shoot. They shoot. Every day they, they shoot. They shoot the shot. They're, one of their things is being clear. That's what they say. So when they so I had a girlfriend that was a Scientologist, and she goes, "Let me be clear with you." Whoa! And then I would love and to you, be able to you do see that. their eyes. You see the alien go, tut, 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 like that. Let me be clear with you, tut, 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 right? And then you, and then they're about to say some like real honest shit. I cannot. I cannot do that at all. We would be bad Scientologists. But okay. But then there's a third type of person who kind of does a zigzag on their way to making their point or asking. It's probably me too. Like the sidewinders. I I, I flip flop. Yeah. I don't. I'm very indirect. I'm very like, 
I have so many problems. Like if I thought, <laughs> if I'm uncomfortable, like like I'll, I'll there are times where I'll start saying something and my brain will go, "Stop talking! This is a lie. Why are you telling them that? You're just wanting, saying what they want to hear." Yeah, and you're just like, mm. "Oh yeah, oh uh, like." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, you're just you're just giving gossip. You know yeah. you, this was a secret you were this person to yeah. tell. Why are you telling this person? If, I am so bad. If I owed you, let's say 15 years ago, okay, you gave me you loaned me three thousand dollars, right? Okay, and then you know I'm doing okay now in life, right? But I never brought it up. Would you ever say anything? No, I talk behind <laughs> your back. Oh, okay. You would. I would you talk. Would talk. I talk behind your back. <laughs> I talk behind your back. You talk shit. I would talk I shit about you like with the people. <laughs> I, I know. I but had I, yeah. I had a friend. <laughs> That's exactly what I do. I had a friend ask me for four thousand dollars very recently, uh-huh. and he was like, "Don't tell your wife." And I was like, "I'm fucking. I've already told her. Like, <laughs> you, you, I don't know what you're talking about." And so then my wife's like, "What are you gonna do?" And I said, "I'm gonna give him the money, and then I'm just gonna hate him." <laughs> goes, Why would you do that? I go, I'm going to give him the money, hate him, and then I'm going to tell everyone he asked for $4,000. <laughs> I gave him $4,000. That's what I do. And yeah. I was like. That's and, what I do. Yeah. I, 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 I think I told Rogan, and Rogan goes, give him six and tell him to get the fuck away from you for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like I I, I am such a bad person. If you steal a joke from me, I, I just tell, talk behind your back. Yeah. Like, and by the way, that's why I've gotten to a place now with joke writing. For me, I try to put such a fucking fingerprint on it so that, like, even that stupid fucking uh, doggy style joke, cough into the wall. Yeah. It's, I, I, immediately I go, that's my fault. That's not a good enough joke. That's my fault. Anyone can take your joke. You're not working. That's where my brain is. Mm-hmm. But man, if. if but you, can I say something real yes. quick about that? Oh, yeah. is, is that. I stopped worrying about stuff like that because the thing is, is that it's still not you telling it. Right? Yeah. So no matter what you write, people aren't fucking going to a Burt Kreischer show <laughs> because they're fucking your jokes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're I, a great joke writer and you have great jokes. I think I tell good stories and I think it's a but party. It's, you're, they're fucking going for you. Mark Marin said to me, we were talking to him and he said, uh, he's like, you know, I, I wonder sometimes why more people don't come out to see me. He's like, me and you d- doing the same venue in Orlando, you're doing four shows there, I'm doing one. I wonder why. Because he's like, you know, not not being ba- mean, but he's like, we're both very talented stand-ups, but why is it that more people come to you than come see me? And I was like, I have no idea. And he goes, I think it's because when they leave your show, they go, that was a great time. Yeah. I would like to do that again. Mm-hmm. And I said, what do they say when they leave your show? He goes, wow, that was heavy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And I think, I, I actually, it was a really insightful thing, and I... I I went into, like, this weekend I just got off of, I went into this weekend going, yeah, don't don't overthink it. It doesn't, uh, no one's in there going like, God damn it, he's the spokesman, the voice of our generation. No one's saying that. People are like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to laugh pretty hard at a few of these jokes. He's going to rip his shirt off. We're going to go to a bar afterwards. Yeah. It should be a good time. See, that's exactly how I perform. I, you know, I, get, I get naked at the end of my show. You're, you are one of the dance. most entertaining human beings in the world. You are like human fucking Prozac. Mm-hmm. Oh. I, I, thank, I am thank you. dying for yeah, yeah, your yeah. special. Thank you. Because your special will be a special. I, I clear the room. Ooh. Uh, I will not watch it with anyone else. I'll get a six-pack of beer. I'll put it on ice oh, you're about to make me cry. and crack it and go, all right, let's do this. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm working on it, Bert. Are you doing working. it with All Things Comedy? Yeah, I'm going to do one. I think, I know, I think I, they told me what you guys are doing, and I think it's going to be fucking amazing. I think it's going to be great, too, and I'm really working hard. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break to tell you about a product we use and love and endorse. Hims, hims, him, what you lose, you'll never get it. Oh. Hims, 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 get your dick and get it ready. Funky. You guys, um, I'm telling you this right now, FYI, for your information, um, is, is that Hims is a product that I wish that I had as a young man because uh, I started losing my frontal hairs. <laughs> frontal hairs? Yeah, my frontal hairs at, at, the, at my late 20s. Mm. And my dick sometimes, you know what I mean, it goes, doesn't work. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, for me as a young man, I didn't have the resources or the money to get those things addressed. But now you do have these resources. Mm-hmm. Hims is a great, 60% of men start to lose their hair by the age of 35. Once you've noticed thinning hair, it can be too late, my friends. What, what's the um, percentage? 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35. Is that hairline slowly starting to move backwards? Any bald spots yet? The best way to prevent 
more hair loss is to do something about it while you still have some. Tell us about it, Gil. Guys, no snake pill oils or gas station counter supplements. No more awkward in-person doctor visits or long pharmacy lines. Right now, our listeners can get started with their first month free. Go to forhims.com slash belly. That's forhims.com slash belly. Prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Offer valid only if prescribed three-month minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash belly. Blue Apron, the tastiest food that you'll ever have. Delivered right to your home. Ah. You guys, um, when I come home from a hard day of doing nothing, um, I get I, I, honestly five uh, meals a night, mm-hmm. uh, not a night, a week, I, I, I get Blue Apron, and when I see the box in front of my doorstep, I know that I'm getting a very delicious meal that I could actually, I'm a bad cook, but I could actually prepare myself. Mm-hmm. You can choose from a variety of chef-designed, ready-to-cook meals with perfectly proportioned ingredients mm-hmm. and lots of flavorful options and sent to your door. Prices, prices start at as low as seven forty nine dollars per serving. You want to know what you're eating this week? I want to know now. You're eating tahini dressed chicken and kale. Oh, shit, like the tini, so, uh, tahini islands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a glazed meatloaf with, mashed, oh. with sesame mashed potatoes. Oh, oh, my God. I love glazed meat. Oh, oh. shit. <gasps> Tell us more about it, Gil. Guys, cooking doesn't have to be a hassle. Blue Apron gives you options and makes it easy, taking the guesswork out of dinner so you can enjoy a home-cooked meal. Check out this week's menu and get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash belly. That's blueapron.com slash belly. Blue Apron, feed your soul. Enjoy the show. I'm going to ask you another question because I wrote this down because you were talking and I wanted to write this down. I want to get your fucking opinion about this. A couple of times when I've been on the road, um, the middle act, who I fly out or whoever, yeah. will always go, will sometimes go, hey, I'm just going to take off. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, do you mean, what do you mean take off? Like take off? No, like while you're on stage, I'm, I'm just going to go take off. No, you're not. Oh. No, you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're not. And, and, I always fucking go, green and, and, the, and the bird, I always go, yeah, go have fun. Mm. You know what I mean? And then they take off. But then when I'm on stage, Talk about I'm thinking about them the whole time. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm getting loud. And I'm like, well, where the fuck is he? Where is he going? Uh, That's so wow. important. Wow. Yeah. I worked. I was getting ready to do a special, and I worked with a, a person. I won't say anything. I won't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was, this is, by the way, this is, I mean, this is. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, I worked with a person, and I, and I got off stage Thursday. Uh, also sold out, right? Great room. Great room. Portland Helium. I um, like that room. Yeah. Get off the show say, uh, Thursday, and I go to the green room. I'm like, where's dot, dot, dot? And they're like, oh, they went home. I went, oh. So I texted them. I said, are you feeling sick? And they said, no. Just getting to bed early. I went, cool. Friday, two shows. After the first show, yeah. they're not home. They're, they went for a walk. Uh, like uh, They got off stage and went for a walk. Show back up for the second show. And I was like, hey, you going to hang out tonight? And they're like, no, nah, probably not. And I went, okay. Saturday comes around and I'm fucking fuming. I am fuming. <laughs> yeah. And I say, hey, just so you know, you're not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. It came out that way? It came out. It spilled <laughs> out. And they went, what? And I said, I didn't bring you here because I think you're brilliant. Oh. I didn't. You're not here because you're funny at all. You're here because I need someone to be around. I can't be by myself. Wow. And I, and I can't be around. And now I'm now I'm stuck. I, I would rather do a one man show if you're not going to be here. Yeah. And and that person was like, Oh, okay. Well, I can hang out tonight. And I was like, Yeah. Oh no no you no, you can't. You're going to hang out tonight. You're yeah. gonna sit at that bar and you're gonna drink. I don't care if you're in fucking rehab. You're gonna drink at that fucking bar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then you're gonna tell me how great my show was. You're gonna watch my whole show. Wow. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. It, and when I was when I was coming up, mm-hmm. dude, it was so fucking different. I would I I'm open for Jay Moore and I would sit in the back, I would watch Jay's entire set. Bro. I watched every I could recite Jay Moore's set. Verbatim, I knew it. And, and if I can, and if there was a tag, I'd run in. I'd tell him a tag. I give him joke ideas. That was I was I was part of the JJ train. It was mm-hmm. I, my job wasn't to go in and murder. I mean, and and Jay never made it like clear. Like, hey man, you know, I didn't just bring you here to murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I was murdering at those shows. I mean, it was sold out. Yeah. Fucking tits to tits, and you could destroy. It was such a good comedy crowd, and. Uh, my job was not that. It was it was 
what what does Jalen do after? Like, and I, he didn't he didn't say it. I just knew. I'm here for him. I'm not here to just murder. Yeah. Uh, Let me tell you something. When you were, oh God, you got me real emotional just now, man. Let me say something to you, my friend. Okay. I have opened for many people as well back in the '90s. Holly, Carlos Mencia. You can say what you want about him, but I did it. Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I, every moment of it, you appreciate. Oh. I carried the golf bags. I would go up, I would go to Mencia's house early when we're flying out to pick up his merch and go to the airport and do that. I would watch all the shows. I would hang out after the show. Yep. Right? Do you know why? Because it's, number one, it's, I'm, I'm t- it's all it's an honor it's a fucking honor yeah. number two I'm learning and number three what was I doing before I was like waiting tables and doing all this this what an opportunity dude these kids now fucker oh god don't even- oh my god these kids they have no gratitude <laughs> they don't know nothing, nothing bro it's like they don't they don't Thank you, <laughs> right? They did. They they sit. They're they're like they have attitudes, right? Yeah. How was the weekend? It was sold out shows. Did you have fun? Yeah, it was alright. All right, fuck you, man. Oh man. No gratitude, my friend. <laughs> Let me say something, okay? It's just like, what I'm saying is is that, you know, it's um, it's a difficult business to go into, yeah. right? And you are the same as I, right? We bring young people, right? And when we want to give them opportunity, that's what it is, is opportunity. You know, I took Nicole Amy Schreiber to the Schomburg Improv, mm-hmm. sold out every show. And um, that's a good weekend. <laughs> and, and, and Did the, you do that to the camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Magician. And the, the managers came up to Nicole and goes, hey, um, you're really funny. Can you, we, we, we would like to headline you on off nights. And she was super grateful, right? Yeah. And that's what it's all about. That's what, the opportunity mm-hmm. that is given to you. I had a guy open for me in New York. I'll say his name. I'll say his name. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Freddie Lockhart. Do you know him? Yeah, I know Freddie Lockhart. Yeah. You're not going to believe this. Careful, because I think he handled I love your him. Facebook page. He does? He's a great guy. <laughs> He's a great guy. Freddie, you're a great, 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 great comic. Great work on Facebook. And you, you, you fucked up one time, and I'm about to share that. Fuck up. All right? You fucked up one time. I'm about to share it. All right? And I love you. You're diverse. You're you have, diverse. you have, diverse. yeah. I love your you're, diversity. You're intrinsically funny, and you're an anomaly. And I love it. Okay? But this fuck face. Uh. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so it was a, it was a Caroline's, and he's featuring, and he has a pretty good set. And as we're crossing each other, he looks at me and goes, follow that. Oh. I mean, Bobby just got up. It's, it's a competition now? <laughs> follow that? Follow that as if, you know what I mean? He's trying to bury you. Right? Wow. I know. Freddy. <laughs> What's happening, hot stuff? <laughs> 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 what? He did a 16 game. I love, What's happening, hot stuff? I know what I'm my point is we were, is, is that right, th- we, we watched that on the bus and our bus drivers black and he goes I don't find that racist at all <laughs> really and then we watched Beverly Hills Cop yeah, yeah. where the majority of comedic devices are just be gay like yeah. and everybody's yeah. like oh this will be hilarious hi is Victor uh, Maitland here I, 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 I got herpes simplex to tell and, like, and everyone's dying he's gay can you imagine how funny that would be oh. he's not gay that's why it's cool but he was gay yeah, yeah, yeah. Damon Wayans is in it and he's like take a banana Take a <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and my professor was like, I don't think that's racist at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go back to Freddie. No, but my point is, is that, but that was, but the generation I grew up with is, it, it, it's just about respect, and I don't know these kids today. I don't know what happened. I, you know what? It's 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 there is an entitlement. I think I, I I've noticed it. I I I have this. This is going to come off uh, horribly wrong. <laughs> I have a hard time working, having women open for me because I can't tell them what to do the way I do a man. Mm. Like, I can't go, hey, we're going back to my room to drink. I can't do that. Oh, I wrote, I worked with, uh, I worked with um, Jessica Michelle Singleton, mm. and I, it was so uncomfortable. And she'll say this, it was so awkward because I, I got back to, we went in Cleveland at Hilarities, and then we got back, 
She had a great time. We're, we're having a great time at the bar. We get back to the hotel, and I'm not done yet. And I said, listen, I don't know how to do this properly, but I, I'm not done. And I need you as a comic. to. Ha- I want to hang out and talk comedy. I want to bullshit. I want to gossip. I want to drink. But I'm also a married man, and I can't just invite you to my room. Mm. I don't know how mm. to do this. This yeah. is really awkward. Mm. And I don't yeah. want you to feel pressured. I want you to be able to. She's like, just let's just go to your room. And I was like, okay, but I need you to know. Like, yeah, she's yeah. so uncomfortable. Yeah. She's very funny young lady, she's by the way. very funny. Very. Her. But, but it, love her. But because of my lifestyle, it makes it difficult for me to work with women because I'll take them. Like, I worked with Taylor Tomlinson for a long time. Yeah. And- Taylor would Taylor was great. She would hang out, watch your show. At the end of every night, she had punch ups for your jokes or hey, this is what you did. This is why this joke's not working. You should open with this joke. She was amazing. Get bright girl. But only but she didn't drink and she didn't and she was single at the time and so she didn't and she didn't fuck around. She wasn't like a whore. And so <laughs> one night, one night I said, I go, Stop. I'm gonna make you go out with me tonight. Like you're gonna hang out with me. We're doing this. Yeah, man. She never even took her backpack off. She was in this bar like, yeah. Can you release me now? And I was yeah. like, uh, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, with guys, I can just tell them what to do. I fucking, I, and there's part of my sensibility is like very like, I love uh, me tooing the guys on the bus. I love it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like I love, I, love <laughs> I mean, it. I, I, I mean, can we, can we talk about it? It's, I, I, I don't want to get in trouble because she's, you know, she's, she, she, I get in trouble for it all the time. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, listen, it's not gay. It's not sexual assault, right? <laughs> when I, you know, you know, just like to hug for an extra long time. <laughs> oh, I, our, we'll hit the bus door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they'll be like, Bert, are you up? And I'll be naked and I'll just hit the door and the door opens like Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here and they're like, God damn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's I know you're not to allowed that. to do that, but I think they have to complain for it to be an official Me Too, right, so I right. think we're good. Right. And I told them if they complain, they get fired. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> I mean, for some people... <laughs> it's uncomfortable, but we'll laugh. <laughs> if they complain, I fire them. It's kind of weird, And right? I ruin their careers. I'll talk behind their back and destroy them. Like, for someone like me, that would be a perk of the job, yeah. while others, that would be... You know, something compl- oh, totally me too. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I'm yeah. sure. I think I'm. In, I know the guys. I, one of them is my cousin. So yeah. My co- I, my I. I don't. It's so weird. I don't think of like nudity the way I guess some people do, and all, they're all dudes. They're all bros. Because all you're not thing. a creep. You do it to have a silly time. But yeah. what is it? Because you and because when you like when we, I did your Netflix show, right? Me and you and you got but, naked, but is, and I just completely took my clothes off and just laid next to you. Yeah. <laughs> What is that about us that we do? Know. What is it? It's so we a, need help. It's a part of my personality. Me too. It's like, it's like uh, you know what? It's, <laughs> me too. Me too. Me too. You know, it's like Donnell does not like anything oh remotely my homosexual. God. Like he, he was so uncomfortable that he whole was, day, and it, uh, that makes it don't touch so me. much funnier to me. I know. <laughs> I know. When someone is uncomfortable with yeah, it, yeah. it makes it. Like when there's a guy who's like, oh, come on, man, don't do that shit. You're like, <laughs> I think I found out what I'll be doing for the next yeah. two days. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Donnell was not comfortable. He with was it. not. He, he was. He had fun time doing it, but there was times, even in privately, he would just go, yo, man, don't touch me. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, why? Because I'm completely naked? <laughs> what can happen? When you were, people don't even know what happened, but it was, I mean, do you, when you were putting that enema up my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? All right, so can we talk about it a little bit? Or, yeah, yeah. It's not out yet. Yeah. It's not out yet, right? No, it's is So they this, go. This show, by the way, this show, I, I'm shocked that we didn't get shut down. I, I can't believe I it. I said to one of the girls at one point, one of my camera ops or assistant camera ops is a woman. I'm naked in a bedroom. I'm laying on. The, we were doing shots of me waking up, and it's just different shots of me naked laying around the bedroom. And I'm just totally naked, laying around the bedroom in different positions, ass in the air, you know, uh, kill a glass of wine. And, and I, at one point I said, uh, hey, did they, did they, did you know there would be this much nudity on the show when you signed up? And she goes, <laughs> very serious, she goes, they told me this was comedians in cars getting coffee. <laughs> and I went, so uh, is that no. a no? She goes, I had no plan for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow. And she goes, I mean... At one point, when it was you and Bobby, I just was like, I, I guess I, she goes, I was trying to keep my eyes away from it. She goes, but when it was, came to you and Bobby, I, I had to look. I, there was, yeah. I couldn't look. It was everywhere. I mean, imagine me naked, Bert naked, outside. 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 He, Bert is on his 
on his um, like a doggy, right? All on his fours. all fours, <laughs> right? Bent cool. over, oh, completely safe. naked. I have an enema tube <laughs> filled with coffee, <laughs> and I have to stick it in Bert's asshole, yeah. right? Yeah. I stick it in his asshole, oh. and he shits it back out in my face. A coffee enema? Yeah, the coffee enema. No, no, no. The coffee enema. No, the coffee enema. Uh, Deflects off the butt. No, you pour. D- Donnell poured it in. Bobby's getting ready to stick it in my ass, but he's talking to Donnell, and he doesn't know that the valve is open. <laughs> <laughs> and as he's talking about now, Donnell, the coffee starts squirting out of his hand. Bobby sees it on his hand and thinks I'm shitting on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I yeah, yeah. loses, <laughs> mine. loses, like, oh! And then gets it on me. I'm on all fours. Yeah, I yeah, see shit everywhere. It looks like shit. I'm like, who's shitting? <laughs> then the, then, then we had a regular enema. Yeah. It was so weird. I've never had a man put anything in my asshole before. <laughs> but Bobby put it in nice. my asshole. First time. Yeah. And then left it there. It, it was standing there yeah. by itself. Yeah. And then... And then I, I filled it up, and then I, I, it all of a sudden shot out, and I shot all over Bobby. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What yeah. a fun time! That was like yeah. a fun day it in was, the mountains. Yeah, yeah. That was nothing compared to how this episode ends. The episode ends with the fu- the f- hardest I've ever laughed watching <laughs> any video ever in my entire. Oh, you saw part. it? Oh, I've seen it. It looks it good, is, dude. It is so fucking funny. It is. <laughs> I saw the dailies. Yeah. It is so fucking funny because Donnell was like. Kind of like, nah, bro, no, 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 kid, no, nah, son, no, son, I don't do that gay shit, son. We broke so many. That's the episode where I said to Netflix, they, I said, hey, just are you gonna air all this? And they were like, they were like, yeah. And I said, are you ready for the backlash? Because like, there's a point where we're doing scream therapy, and Bobby, me, and Donnell are on our backs, and Bobby and Donnell just lost their dads, and they're talking about. The frustrations of having the dad's trying, and that's how it's like a it's a it's a real therapy where you scream and you get your frustrations mm-hmm. of your childhood out, and they're having a hard time connecting with the scream therapy for their fathers. And Donnell says, "Why don't I just play your dad, Bobby? I'll talk <laughs> to you." Oh, and so he Jesus. starts going, he starts going, "Oh, Bobby, son," and I go, "Hey, Donnell, I think that's racist." And Bobby goes, "I'll do your dad, Donnell." <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Donnell. Oh. Sorry, I just got out of jail. Where you been, son? Oh it was, my it god. It is so <laughs> fucking funny. I am crying laughing. Oh, we had a great time. It was it was the great the episode starts with uh I was getting a painting uh oh. a painting um commissioned of yeah. me. My wife has always wanted a picture of me on a bare skin rug mm. like brute like uh like Burt Reynolds. Yeah. And mm. so I got a com- I was getting a painting commissioned and so the guy so I was Donna walks in and I'm naked holding my junk on a bare skin rug. And then Bobby walks in and just takes off all his clothes and gets in. And we post a picture. Bobby posted yeah. it to his Instagram. Uh-huh. I posted it. I got yeah. taken down off of Instagram. You know, the, it, I got blocked. I, I had to say something. Down? It did. No, mine it did. didn't. Yours didn't. Do you, I, I honestly think that there is some sort of like persecution thing going on with white dudes. Wait, I thought it was the opposite. No, no, no. Because well, you him and I posted our no. I po- I posted. Uh, no, me kissing Andrew Santino's dick got yanked. Do you think it's because of Santino, not you? Yes. Uh. <laughs> Yes. Really? Yeah. Well, By the way, Santino has a hog. Does he? Oh, I've never seen it. Beautiful. Oh, my God. The beautiful thing. I was thing. wondering where his, all his confidence comes from. Because mm. he's like, because he's, he's oh. super red. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, ugly as fuck. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, where do the. I, I mean, it's like, I, he walks with such a swagger. And I was like, usually redheads are come in hot and angry and like Bill Burr, but Santino's got this swag on him. Yeah. And then I saw his dick and I went, oh, that's what it is. Yeah. It's big dick. That was energy. one sack, too, by the way, what you saw. On God. Me. So when I posted that photo with you and I naked on that bear thing, we posted it together. Yours got yanked immediately, immediately and, and then I got shadow banned. Mine's still on there, so I, I'm wondering what is, is what is going on here. Is it because ra- a couple a couple months ago we talked about how yours kept getting taken down, and then Steve O would post something similar and his not get taken down. So we came up with a conspiracy that they were against Asians, but now you're flipping the I think narrative. They flipped it. I think times have changed in like six months. It's been it's a tough it's, so it's a tough time to be a white guy. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, you I'm think, not gonna think- well, I'm not gonna trade it, but. <laughs> I'm not gonna roll the dice on something else. It's been a, I've had a good run. I gotta be honest with you. Say it's been a bad two years. The first forty-five are fucking awful. Awesome. Country clubs. Yeah, yeah. Upgraded first-class flights. <laughs> George Bush had probably George Bush probably had the best run of being white ever. Oh let's, yeah. Let's rank. Let's rank. Let's rank. 
white guys that killed it with their privilege, like that really leaned in and murdered it with their privilege. Chris D'Elia. Chris <laughs> <laughs> I get it, I get it. He earned every second. He's a talented guy. Um, George also, Bush is a big one. It's hard to beat George Bush because he really kind of was a, a simple man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he owned the Rangers. He really Like, did. I mean, how do you like, like he owned the Rangers. Yeah. All because like, of Pappy, you know? It's fucking insane. Yeah. I mean, he was like, he got jobs just because his dad, like, he just walked in and hey, hey, guys, I'll, I'll take that. I, you want? I'll tell you a good white privilege story. <clears throat> so, this is some George Bush shit. I was in college, and uh, I had a job working. I used to drive girls around at night. It was safe escort is what it's called. So, like, girls would call, and I'd either walk them from building to building at night, or I'd take a car, and I'd pick them up and drive them. And so it's so funny. I ran into this woman. <laughs> I ran into this woman. That black women always call. They always wanted the car. They never wanted to fucking walk. They were always like, "Yo, send the car." And you're like, "Well, it's a short one. Send the car anyway." And they hang up. So I always I drove. I probably drove every single black woman at Florida State somewhere at some point in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I ran into a, a black woman this weekend whose husband plays professional football, and they both went to Florida State at the same time I did. And I went, "You you went to Florida State?" I said, "Well, what what dorm did you live in?" And she tells me, and I go, "Do you ever take a safe escort?" She goes, "Oh hell yeah!" I go, "That was me." She went, wow. "Shut up!" She goes, "Oh, did you drive the car?" I was like, "Yeah." She goes, "We used to take that to FAMU," and I was like, "I drove you to those parties and picked you up from those wow. parties." Anyway, best white privilege story. <clears throat> this is my probably my tops. I'm in, I'm a I, the safe escort shuts down for a semester, and I need a job. I, despite what everyone thinks, I've always worked. But not really like worked work, safe house work. So my dad says, uh, I can get you a job. I can get you an interview at a law firm. Uh, it's a big law firm right on Tennessee or on uh, Monroe Street. Go up there, take do an interview. So I go up there and I sit with one of the guys. And he just talks about my dad, talks about my dad's business. Wow. And then I go, okay. And he goes, great, you're hired. Doesn't ask me anything. I go, really? <laughs> and I go, yeah. So I show up the next day to work. And I go, hey, I'm here to work. And they're like, yeah. I go sit in the copy room. And so I sit in the copy room, and I'm sitting there, and no one's telling me. Are there other kids that work there? And I go, does anyone know what I should be doing? And they're like, I no. <laughs> and I go, okay. And they're like, why don't you go ask the guy that hired you what you're doing? And so I go back, and I knock on his, he's like one of the partners. I knock on his thing. I said, you know, Mr. whatever your name is, um, I know it's really giving me any direction of what to do. And he goes, yeah, well, I, we don't have a job for you, so just hang out. <laughs> wow. And so I was like, okay. So I just didn't. Do anything. Oh my god! I just got hired to hang out at a law How long firm. Did you worked there for? Uh, for probably like, probably all the until I left college. Wow! Wow, that oh. is such. And a- you just sat there. I sat. Well, no, you know what? So then, so then one of the older partners comes in one day, and I'm sitting in the in the copy room, and he goes, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I said, "Nothing." <laughs> and he goes, "What did we hire you to do?" I said, "I don't know." And he goes, "Okay, you're mine." He goes, "I want you to make sure that pot of coffee." is filled with fresh coffee every day. And when I pull in, I'm going to call the secretary. They're going to have you run in. I want you to park my car for me, and I will and I can walk in to the front because like, the parking was down here. It was an uphill walk. Wow. So all I did for real was make coffee, and then this guy had like a, a yellow lemon Cadillac, and they'd call, and they'd go, Mr. Whatchamacallit's pulling up. He had also had a emphysema. And so I'd come out, <laughs> I'd, I'd bring his tank to him, yeah. he'd put his tank on, he'd walk into his office, I'd get in, there was a tank in his car, I'd take a little hit, drive his car down. What? I did nothing for that fucking law. That is wow. so different than my job when I was 15. What'd you do? I worked at LA Fitness, and they had, not only did I have to do everything from new memberships to passing out flyers, but at the end of my shift, the older general manager would have me read my poems to him. Uh, that's fucking uh, bullshit. And he would park. You know that I showed you the LA Fitness I used to work at on but South you, Lake but, in But you said because we drove by there the other day. Yeah. And you said that that dude. And I never was, thought was he I, was he weird on with you or no? Yeah, he definitely like, wanted a, Yeah, you wanted uh, a bang. Get a little. Right? And how old was he? Baby. He was in his almost fifty, I think. And he drove oh. up. Oh. And then would um, you ever smash a fifteen-year-old no, or no. even? He think would have him bring. I, he would. <laughs> Bobby. He would have me bring my diary. Uh, Let's just be clear. I I have a fifteen year old. So the oh, idea wow. of smashing a fifteen yeah, year old yeah. is disgusting. 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 Because I'm like, oh god, oh fuck. That's what I meant. And he would give me yes. pointers. <laughs> right. That's what I meant. That's what I meant too. Yeah. He would give me pointers about my my emo poems. 
Really? Wow. He's like, yeah, you know, and he would try to like kind of relate by telling me about his emo days, and it was just so. Susie and the Banshees were really cool when I was growing. <laughs> I love Susie and the Banshees. <laughs> now, Bert, have you have you talked to Ari? Yeah. How is he doing? He's. I just I just uh, sat at the cellar with him for a little while. He's doing good. Good. Yeah, it seems like he's. I I don't. I, you know, Ari didn't wasn't online. He wasn't online when all the hate was coming his way. So I think whereas we might have seen it, he didn't see any of it. So he's like, was it bad? It was almost like- I love that. It was almost like someone that was in a coma and then wakes up and they're like, and like goes, hey, where are all the people? And they're like, oh, Mm. there was a pandemic. Everyone died. (laughs) And you're like, was it bad? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And so he does not, I, I think he's still doing shows under a fake name. Ah, uh, right. But uh, but because he, probably he he probably fears some sort of like physical backlash, maybe. Yeah, but he's I mean he's planning a big tour. There, I mean like a theater tour mm. and tour bus and wow, he's, plan, he's planning a really big tour. So I, you know, I think he might be. He was a really interesting guy to talk to during that whole thing. So I I called him. He got upset with me because he thought I didn't call him. I called him the day it fucking happened, and the day after I called him that Monday and. uh and he was like, uh, and he was upset. He's like, you should have reached out, man. I was like, I fucking did, asshole. So I think it was a very confusing, kind of like emotionally turbulent time for him. Mm. And I think he knew shit was going on, but he didn't want to look, you know? Yeah. It's almost like, uh, it's almost like, like he was in a, in like, like he locked in the house and there was a riot going on outside and he didn't want to look out for a little bit. So, but he had the emotional turmoil of knowing there was a riot going on outside. Yeah. Mm. But also then it became a safety issue too. Because I think that's what right now is maybe a safety issue. That's why he goes by a different name, right? He's, 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 I, I forget what his name is. I probably shouldn't say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, don't, don't say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, now I'm a big fan of your wife. Oh. I love her. I, by the way, my she's wife on, would fucking love you. We got to do on, a I group watch. podcast at my house. Oh, that'd be I would great. love to. I would love, I love to. that. But does she? I, I know that the whole Ari. And, oh, she uh, hates his guts. I, okay, yeah. I she think. hates him in a way that not. Many people, she's all. I, she really hates him, like really hates him. And that was what bothered me about when he mollied me. Was I was like, I was like, the. It's so funny. He wants me to release the podcast. I will never release that fucking podcast. It does not look make him look. It, it not only does it not make him look good. First of all, it's proof that he committed a crime. That's number one. Mm. And 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 number two, it's just it. He's like, it's funny. It's funny. And I go, it's not because you see in my eyes a person who thinks. I might die. And you can see that. And I see it clearly. Mm. But you also see like me realizing Ari just fucked up our friendship. Mm. And I and and I and I was like, that's what bothered me the most out of it is I when it happened, I go, You just made it so my kids will hate you. And now my wife will hate you. And you can never come to my house. And I can never go on vacation with you because my wife will always go, Don't go. I don't mm. want you going. Yeah. And you also made it so that I don't really feel safe around you entirely. Mm. And I was like, I kept, in the podcast, I kept going. Why would you do this? Like, why this? I don't because I, I don't. I don't. Let me just get just. Uh, so you do a podcast with Ari? Yeah. In his house. In his in, who's in, in your his house? house. In my house. And how did he slip you the Molly? So I I set it up. I was like I was getting ready to start my tour, and so I said, "This is going to be awesome. I'll do a podcast with Ari. I'll have a few drinks. I'll get on a plane. Um, we'll smoke cigars. This is great. I haven't seen him in a while. Him and Leanne are starting to patch things up. Le- him and Leanne had a falling out before. Because Ari had commented on Georgia's teeth. Georgia, her teeth are great now, but she was younger. She didn't have any enamel on her teeth, and they didn't look great. I posted a picture of me and her in Hawaii, and Ari was like, way to have ugly, no stupid fucking teeth. Oh, fuck no. Oh, fuck no. Fuck Fuck no. no. That is (laughs) absolute beyond crossing the line for me. That's the same reason why I don't post a lot of stuff about my family. Yeah. Because I'm fair game. You can do say anything you want about yeah. me, but if you come for anybody in my family, that's a fuck no for me. Well, I think that's our Ari's Ari's response. By the way, I have defended Ari so much in my life that I now I just I go blame Hitler. It's Hitler's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Hitler did this. Hitler's dad put Ari's dad in a, Hitler put Ari's dad in a concentration camp. Yeah, and so and so his dad is a concentration camp survivor. Yeah, his, you know that comes with some baggage. You know that. Being the son of a concentration camp survivor isn't going to yeah, be that's built a, in trauma. There's trauma, there, yeah. It, yeah. and so part of what is wrong with Ari is there he was Orthodox Jewish and he lost his religion and there's a lot of things going on. So blame Hitler anyway. 
<laughs> the um the so he did that and then I I was like fucking Ari Leanne saw it we were in Hawaii she was livid fucking livid so I took take the picture down I call Ari I go bro don't fuck why would you do that and he was like what it's a joke and I was like it's not a joke my daughter uh. could have seen that and he goes don't post your daughter online don't post your daughter online uh. I was like I was like Ari I was like listen you need to apologize to Leanne and he was like why it was a joke and I was like it, okay all right so then I finally broke her. A, an apology at Segura's house with Ari and Leanne. I say, uh, this is the first time we we're, we're going to do Sober October. I said, Leanne and the girls are there. I go, Ari, I want you to go into the kitchen. I want you to apologize to Leanne. Say, I'm sorry I did that. And he goes, okay, I, I still don't think I should. And I was like, Ari, you should. Just do it. Please, it'll make my life easier. Then I can be your friend. Because my if my wife hates you, we can't be friends. So Tom and I and Christina and my daughters all go to the backyard to let Ari apologize to Leanne. Ari comes out and he goes, I did it. You're welcome. And I went, oh. I go, I go, oh I go thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. We walk inside and Leanne's like, he didn't apologize at all. <laughs> oh, like, really? I said, are you serious? She goes, oh. <laughs> he just kept saying, it's a joke. It was oh. a joke. I guess I'm sorry, but I, I mean, it was a joke. If you didn't get the joke, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so he's a comedy purist. Give, do, <laughs> say what you want to say about Ari. Yeah, but dude, but he has no sensitivity <laughs> oh, other, about other people's feelings. I though. think he might be autistic. Yeah, that's something really going think on. He is so fucking just like. So then, so then, so finally, mm. finally, we get to a place where Leanne is like, you know, whatever. He was. A, I guess he thought it was a joke. It wasn't a joke. We're fine. He comes over our house a couple times. Does laundry at our house because you know he's like a vagabond. We go on hikes. Me and him go on a trip together to Utah. And Leanne's. Now back cool. Yeah. So I said, I go, you know what? This will be cool because the girls love Ari. The girls loved Ari. <laughs> they do not anymore. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I go, he'll come over. We'll do a podcast out back. We'll smoke a cigar, get a little buzz, bring him in. Leanne's going to make dinner for Ari, me. The girls will all have dinner. The girls love having dinner with my friends. Like they, they it's a lot of fun for them because they see a part of my personality, the comedic personality, but untethered. In that guy, and it's fun. It's always fun. They had dinner with Stanhope, and it was like wow. one of their favorite dinners they've wow. ever had. And so, um, so I go back, and Ari is doing something by the bar. It looks suspicious. I mean, honestly, I, I, I it looked super sp- suspicious. But I, in my million years, I never thought he would drug me. In a million fucking years, I, in a million fucking years. And he goes, "Hey, uh, let's do a let's do a celebratory shot. You know, start off the podcast." I was like, "Okay." And he goes, "It's a." Uh, as a, a really good uh with not whiskey uh scotch and i hate scotch i don't like to taste scotch so i go okay so i take the t- scotch and it i could taste something was wrong with it but i just wrote it off to scotch i was like i fucking hate scotch i was like let's do the podcast we start doing the podcast and then like and he's doing this like weird shit where he's like uh yeah uh. like and i'm like and i'm watching him going like what the fuck are you doing and then at one point i go are you on something and he just goes are you on something and I go, no. And he goes, are you sure? And I went, yeah, I'm certain. And he goes, are you 100% sure? Because there's something I need to tell you. And you gotta, you, you can't get mad about it. And I went, what? And he goes, I slipped you Molly. And I, I immediately my heart fucking sank. And I went, all I could think was that kid, that young writer from New York, went down to Mexico, took Molly, and died, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, I immediately I'm like, oh my God, I'm on blood pressure medicine. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm. This may interact with my blood pressure medicine. My face is now feeling really, really hot. I have a fucking spinning out of control panic attack. But my first thought was, this isn't going to end well. Like it, with my fa- you were supposed to stay for dinner. Like this was the my peace was going to be brokered. It, and I was like, Leanne's never going to. Oh, this is going to be really bad. And I'm and I'm doing all the math. And then I'm going. Well, could you have pretended that you weren't on it? Uh, There's no what no, you're. On a, you're on Molly, babe. No. Well, you try your best. You're like two steps away from like dry humping, you know, oh, a fig right. tree. It was <laughs> in the alley. And, uh, in the alley. And it's and it's hard. It's hard to compartmentalize because on one side you're upset, but the other side you're on Molly. So you're like feel great. Mm-hmm. Like I, I remember thinking, <laughs> I remember thinking you're such a fucking asshole. And I said to him that, and then I go, but you're you have your eyes are beautiful. <laughs> and he was like there, and but it, it, he was. He was not, he was not a, he was not, he was not, he didn't realize he had done something wrong until like, almost like a week later. A week later he called me and he was like, I think he texted me and he was like, and I wasn't talking to him, like I was really upset with him. 
And he was like, I, f- I feel like I fucked up our friendship. And I was like, you, th- you think? Like, wow. no shit. Like, and he was like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really upset about it. I'm really upset that I messed up our friendship. I didn't know it was going to, I just wanted to have a good time with you. You're the best guy. And like, we didn't talk for a month and it was during Sober October. I didn't talk to him all Sober October. And then, and I mean, Leanne was, I told Leanne. I, I, How did it play out that day though? Like, when did you tell Leanne? Like, hey. I got slipped to Molly. I might act weird. So I, I had to get ready for a flight. I had to go. F- I had to fly that night. So I'm, I'm now I'm freaking out because I don't like flying, let alone mm. do I like flying on Molly. I don't like flying on Molly. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Well, now you know. Yeah, now I know. It not, doesn't help it out. So uh, Joey Diaz comes over. Joey Diaz sits down. I think Joey Diaz ended up taking Molly to like just make sure we're all cool. Um, my cousin came over. And then Joey, and I, I walk everyone out. And I say, Ari, just leave. Do not say anything to anyone. Just leave this fucking house. So I walk him out, him and Joey out. I then take Le- Leanne's like, Ari, do you want to stay for dinner? And he's like, no. And just walked out. She was like, what's wrong with Ari? And I was like, nothing. I go, I need to talk to you in the, ba- in the bathroom. So I bring her in the bathroom. Oh, my God. And with my cousin. I think with my cousin. I said, I'm going to tell you something, and you can't have emotions about it. And she, <laughs> and she was like... <laughs> Say that Ari did to you. <laughs> yeah, and she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, I, thing to do. I go, I, I, I need you to take care of me right now and not and not go off, off the handle. And she said, what? And then I said, I, Ari slipped me Molly. And she was like, who? Is she like, wow. Mm. Okay. <laughs> wow. What do you need from me? And I said, I need to be packed and I need to get on a plane tonight. And she went, okay. I said, uh, you know, got to get me out of the house without talking to the girls. I don't want to talk to the girls because I'm really fucked up. And she was like, okay. And so she packed a bag for me. I took a shower. It was a great fucking shower. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, uh, and then she got me out the door, and then I went straight to the store. And then the first person I ran into, because I, I was w- way too early for the flight, and I didn't want to be at an airport. I wanted to get to the airport, literally get there and go straight to the mm. plane. So I go to the store and I run into David Spade and Ari's back in the back bar and Whitney's back in the back bar and I'm still on Molly and I'm like, and I'm telling the story and more, everyone's laughing and Ari's like, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But I'm still really upset and then I then I get to, we get on a plane, dude sitting next to me gets the best mac, back massage anyone's ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I get to the event, I get to the place, pass out, wake up the next day and I am a fucking mess. Like my... OCD is all over the place. My, I, I don't really deal much with depression, I guess. I don't know what it is. For me, it manifests itself in panic and OCD. And I was a fucking mess. We had a, a revive and rally. The blood, the uh, fluids people show up. Mm-hmm. They gave me an IV. I felt a little better, but I couldn't write the boat. It was like, for like for like a week almost, I, I would say, I was just like, and Ari was like, that was the biggest mistake I made. I should have given you 5-HTP. And I was like, yeah, okay. I was like, sure, Ari. Yeah. Five HTP. But, um, but Leanne was, I got home, and when I got home, she was like, she's like, you're done. You're done with that guy. No, you never speak to him. I was, oh, like, yeah. I was like, you can't. I was like, listen, I need to make that decision, not you. And I may not make that decision. And I didn't make that decision. I, there's a part of us that, I know you know this too, is there, Ari's a really fucking sweet guy at times like he's such a great 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 guy that's super sensitive and super sweet but there's this other guy that he does where it's like it's just stubbornness that he has yeah and and you just go like and as a friend you go i want to i want to help him like i don't know it's like you but i think that might piss him off even more if you don't meet him where he's at like you can't meet him where you want him to be you got to meet him exactly where he's at if he's gonna he's he's gonna slip you a molly that day that's where you're at and if he's gonna be sweet to you one day then that's where you gotta just take it for what he is that day you definitely don't want him as an enemy because when he was beating the shit out of me well that's not a friendship then if you fear retaliation from somebody and then you treat them you know politically nicely because you think that they're well no Ari and I were like best friends for like seven years I I was there when he first started right so when I would go on the road we would go together we've we've had sex with the different women in rooms together and we've had a lot of good times and then when he brutally beat the shit out of me three weeks in a row and then I had him banned from the comedy store and then when he came back for seven or eight years after that he just was so mean to me because when, when you're on his bad side, he would walk by me. You're a piece of shit. You're not funny. You you shouldn't be here. You're you know what I mean. You're dumb. You know you're dumb. You never went to college. You know, why, you know and he would say that even when we had this like no talking, no truce kind of you know what I mean a truce kind of a thing. 
Um, but then, you know, once, and I hated him. I fucking, I, I didn't hate any, I hated, I hated him more than Hitler. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, and I never knew Hitler, but my point is, through the stories, though. See, I never, I've never, I've never had, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this sounds even fu- more fucked up coming from me, I've never had bad experiences with Ari other than him mollying me, but I don't think, I really genuinely don't think he put any thought into it other than this is going to be awesome. It's Bert, he's the machine, he parties all the time, Yeah, he can handle Molly, yeah. it's only half a hit, no one dies from Molly. Me and him are gonna have a fucking blast. I don't think he thought. I know he didn't think he's on blood pressure medicine. His kids are in the house. His wife's making us dinner. He has to be on a plane tonight. I think he thought we'll do this. We'll go out. We'll party all night. Mm-hmm. He didn't think through all the actions. So for stuff like that, and you know, I've known him for so long. I've never had anything other than this very sweet, loving friendship with him. But I, but I have to say, when he called me seven or eight years later, and he said. Listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he goes, you know, I'm doing this show, this and that. I want you on it. I want you to tell the story, you know, whatever. And we got together. And then I realized that he was he put his hand around me and he goes, I'm so sorry. I love you, man. That was fucking crazy. Eight years. Wow. You know what I mean? And then my now my experiences with him since then has been that sweet old yeah. Ari that I once knew back in the day, you know? So, um... You know, I think he's changed a lot, but um, when I heard about, well, obviously the Kobe thing was like, wow. But then when I heard about you, what, him mauling you, it was just like a little, it just sounds just well, a little weird to me. Well, you know what I mean? It, it, the, thing that, uh, the thing that a few people uh, that, I, that I trust and I, and I love, that I know very well, the thing that a few people put in my head was that it was about jealousy and uh, that... Because we had just con- gone hung out, and I was we were, he was in Madison. I was doing the theater, and he was doing the club. And I had a tour bus, and the, and we were hanging out. Ari was very, very real, not like, not in a bad way, but very real. Like, wow, like this is a, this is so cool, man. It's so cool that you have a tour bus. Like he walked out and he looked at the theater, and he's like, "That's a lot of fucking people to come to see you on a Thursday night." Sold out. He walked on the stage and thought like it, he got a big cheer, and like no one really knew who he was. And so when people started going, he was jealous. I was like, "That's not Ari." I mean, my experience, it's not Ari. Yeah. But then you, but then when you're coming off Molly and your fucking brain's <laughs> not right, yeah, you start going, you start going. Jealousy is real, a real emotion. People do get jealous. You can't deny it. I've I've been jealous of people, mm-hmm. and I I'm a good person. Why shouldn't? Maybe that was retaliation for him to go. You know what? You think you're hot stuff. Now, now you're back to me. Now I'm in control of you. So I, that was a real thing going on in my head, and that was the first thing Ari said. Was he was like, he was like, you have to know that like, um, it was nothing about jealousy. I don't, I have to accept Ari's word for what it is, and that he just thought it was going to be a great time, and I and he really miscalculated it. Yeah, I'm yeah. with Leanne on this. I can appreciate a a a, a complex man. Yeah. I can appreciate all sorts of complex personalities, but that is diabolical because when you involve the kids in someone's home, that is that's to me uh that's poisonous. Also, because I I'm on blood pressure medication myself. <laughs> like, Imagine if that happened to me. Oh, I, know. I this is I'm I'm glad Leanne that's- is is a really rational I mean, if, that, if, if she, the, um, I, I would actually physically, <laughs> physically, yeah, yeah. Look at that head nod. Fight him. I will put all my Filipino power into these fists. <laughs> yeah. And I will fucking talent. Especially because I'm of my sober. Nails, if I was I sober, babe, him. babe, if I was sober the way I'm now, yeah, like, I don't. I want to think about it because it's making me angry. I, I know. I mean, <sighs> Leanne said. The, Leanne said, "This is the one that really got me," and this is what I. This is what. The, this is what made me mad at Ari was that I had to have conversations like this. We're sitting at my sister's house and Ari texts me and I and I grab my phone and I start to reply. My daughter Georgia takes the phone away from me. She goes, Don't talk to that guy. Wow. And I go and I go, Oof. Georgia. She goes, No, no. And I go, Georgia, and she goes, He almost killed my dad. So how about wow. don't, and I went I went motherfucker Ari like in my head I go you didn't I didn't have to have this conversation my daughters loved you they thought you were fucking hilarious yeah. and now they hate you and then and then George goes dad what would you do if someone mollied me and then I I said I'd fucking I would kill them and she, I would find out find what they loved and I would break it I would break what they loved you know- and Georgia said Georgia goes 
And then what would you do if you saw me texting with them after they had mm. mollied me? I went, Ooh. wow. And then I was like, God damn it. Why the fuck do you have to be smart? <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah, I, I, lo- I used to love Ari. Really, if- they were so similar. So There were so many parts of their little brains. That, but I remember one time I walked in and they were talking about how to put on deodorant to each other. Like, just yeah. independently. Oh. And now Isla fucking hates his guts. Wow. And, it ju- and that's what sucks about this whole fucking thing is that, like, I didn't get to have emotions about it. Because I had to take care of everyone else. I had to take care of Ari. I had to take care of Leanne. The girls, I didn't want them to find out. And then when mm-hmm. they did find out, they're like, uh, the first thing they said was, they go, oh, everyone at school's talking about it. We know that Ari roofied oh. you and raped you in the backyard. I go, hold on. <laughs> I like, yeah, yeah. I was, they're like, yeah, a lot of people that get roofied don't know they were raped. I was like, hold on. <laughs> I was like, wait, hold on. It's been a month. And you thought yeah. Ari held me down in the backyard and fucked me in the ass. And you haven't said, like, how are you doing or anything? <laughs> so, yeah, it was super complex. You know what sucks about this whole thing? Dude, uh, the real thing that sucks I, is is that I'm I've always been nice to you. Yeah, have I not? Yeah, you've uh, like a kind like yeah. a kind little yellow creature. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. the yeah. night, of the night yeah. right? Yeah. I'm like a mythological angel. Uh huh. Right, I hug on you. Yeah, of course. Have I ever tried to maul you? No, no. I've only been gentle. Yeah, I've never been invited to your house. For I, I've I, never been invited to your house for dinner. Can I tell you what I fought? <laughs> you go ahead. I've never tried to maul you, right? And I am. This is how broken my brain is yeah. about trust. I went, oh my God, it's in the ice. <laughs> <laughs> he put Molly in the ice. He put Molly in the ice. Yeah. Hello. We're going to take a quick break to share an amazing sponsor with you. Psst, touche. Psst, touche. Psst, touche. Psst, guys, guys, you know what a game changer is for me? My butt. Do you have a butthole? I do. A lot of people don't. Oh. Well, no, I mean, most people do, I mean. Okay. My point is, is that I, I said that wrong. Yeah. If you but have a butthole, this ad is for you. It is ad for you. And it, can I say something about the, uh, is that, that for many, many years, I didn't have a bidet, and my butthole was like, uh, n- I don't want to say Nicaragua, but um, it was a very jungly place. I see. It, it was very, very not good. Got it. And when once I've had a bidet, bidet my, I'm, not, I'm not saying, my, my asshole and that region of my of my body is so fucking clean and fresh, and I cannot imagine life without one. It's hard to believe that when we go to the bathroom in this country, most of us wipe instead of wash. For years, bidets have been available, but hideously expensive, costing thousands of dollars. The Hello Tushy Modern Bidet Attachment is here to democratize the blessings bestowed by bidets and offer clean buttholes to everyone. Hello Tushy cleans your butt with a precise stream of fresh water for $79. What? $79? Insane! It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and it cuts toilet paper use by 80% the trees, the beautiful trees. Mm-hmm. So the Hello Tushy bidet pays for itself in a few it's months. It's kind of the perfect thing to have right now, um, especially with everyone being super frenzied about buying toilet paper. Yeah. Yep. And every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 20-month warranty. Join millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now and have a clean butt with every freaking flush, man. Go ditch. To- yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Don't call me a bitch. I said ditch paper oh. products and uncomfortable chafing when you switch to the soothing, cleansing stream of water from a Hello Tushy bidet attachment. With Hello Tushy, you don't wipe at all. Even the best two-ply can't cut it when it comes to hands-free poop experience. Go to hellotushy.com slash tigerbelly to get 10% off. This is a special offer for Tiger Belly listeners, so go to hellotushy.com slash tigerbelly for 10% off. Hellotushy.com slash tigerbelly. Enjoy the rest of the show. I've never been invited to your house. Anything? <laughs> you're you, uh, you're definitely coming to my house. I know, house. but it just happened. Our, our, our really guest happened. last week, or this week, Roy Choi, I know Roy. Yeah, he yeah, talked about um, judging the cookout yeah. with you and Sebastian. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he said- And he said yours was exponentially more delicious. <laughs> in fa- and that you understood flavor. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because the two meals that you've made for me, right, on your cooking show, uh-huh. delicious. Yeah. But then when I did the Netflix show with you and that steak with the fucking coffee ground crust, Ooh. that was so fucking good. Dude, Roy Choi- I I have stories about that guy. He came over to my house for Thanksgiving one. We, are, we lived like right next door to each other, right? Yeah. Like our daughters were best friends. As a matter of fact, they would if they were gonna have sex, they'd bring his daughter over and be like, "Hey, can she have a play date for about thirty minutes?" <laughs> oh, wow. and, and, yeah, and so and so and we do the same. Hey, Georgia, go down and see if you can play piano with them. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so uh, one year at Thanksgiving, he were si- I made a big Thanksgiving. Girls were playing. Me and him were on the couch having a drink. I don't even know if he drank really, but um, and he says he had a great job at Rock Sugar, and Rock Sugar was in like Century City. He goes, I think I'm thinking about quitting. And I said, Why? And he goes, I'm I'm gonna quit. I think I'm gonna get a taco truck. I said, Are you serious? He goes, Yeah, like do like fusion, like Korean barbecue. And then I can, all the ingredients will be there. I have no overhead. I just get the truck. And then if it does well, I get another truck. I think, I, I got to be honest with you, I think, it's the, I think it's the future. And I went, can I be honest with you? He's like, yeah. I go, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> wow. And he goes, really? I go, Roy, you have a kid, man. You got to stay, keep the job, keep the health insurance. And he was like, yeah, thanks for your input. He did it, and it was a game changer in oh, culinary yeah. experiences. <laughs> so the lesson is never listen never to Burr. Never listen to Burr. <laughs> never listen to Burr. I, made, I remember I had him and Segura over for dinner one night, and I made white chili. Another two people that went over to the house. <laughs> I love white chili. I made white chili, and it said, uh, it said nine, <laughs> nine cases, a big thing, nine little, little tins mm-hmm. of chiles. So I open them all, I drain them, and I dump them in, nine of them. <laughs> and then we I, we played it, and I go to taste it, and I had substituted jalapenos. Oh. And it was so fucking hot. With the seeds and all? <laughs> uh, so hot oh. that Roy left. He goes, I, I couldn't do he, it. I go, Roy, how do I fix this? And he goes, you can't. And he literally <laughs> just walked out of my door, didn't say goodbye, just walked, wow. Wow. walked away. And Tom goes, are you serious? I was, wow. like, I was like, Tom, what are you going to do? And Tom's like, we're going to fucking eat it. And so me and Tom are the only ones that ate it. Did, your, did it taste good? Oh, it was fucking horrible. Yeah. It was horrible, but that's what a friend does. <laughs> yeah, Roy is. Roy was, I mean, we... They were, they were really like really close friends of ours for a very long time because we lived right next to our kids were the exact same age. And then watching him blow up was crazy. I remember Steve Byrne one time he called went me. Over, he went over to your house? No, Steve, no. Let me ask you, let me ask you something. Let me ask, <laughs> you, let me ask you a question. I want to name some comics to see who's been at your house. Okay. Okay. Has Steve Byrne ever been to your house? Yes. Yes. Of course. Stop. Steve, <laughs> Steve Byrne is a Z. <laughs> Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they, I, 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 look at my face. I'm getting fucking hot. Yes, you got throat polyps. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hold on. I do my podcast out of my house, too. So I haven't had Steve over for dinner. Have I ever done your podcast? No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I've done yours honestly, twice honestly, now. Honestly, honestly, honestly. honestly <laughs> this is the second honestly, time. Honestly, 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 dude, honestly, dude, what on, did I, what did I uh, have? What am I doing wrong? Nothing. I no, want, I, I want. I, no, what am I doing wrong? Nothing. I must nothing, be doing something no, wrong. No, I just like I haven't had Santino on either, and it's just. Has he been to your house? No. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank God, <laughs> Eric Griffin. No. Thank God, Eric Griffin. I'm writing it down. Santino, By the way, you know Santino. And Whitney Griffin. Cummings. Yes. She's been to your house. Yeah. Oh, my daughters love Whitney. Crystalia. <laughs> Crystalia. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking asshole. <laughs> You son of a fucking cocksucker. My who else says, who, who else? Whitney came to my house, and Whitney and I are friends, but we have great chemistry. My, my wife goes, uh, and the girls love Whitney. I mean, she just hangs out with the girls. Our dogs love Whitney. She comes by. She had a pig, and the girls were following her on Instagram and watching her with the pig. And then she came by when the fires happened, and the yeah. girls emptied out their closets for Whitney. They got all these clothes Aww. ready for Whitney. Aww. Everyone loved her. And my wife just one day goes, you know, we were doing a sitcom, and she goes, i got to be honest with you, you should really cast Whitney as your wife. I mean, you guys get along. It seems like it would be a natural fit. And I went, oh, yeah, that's a good call. And so I texted my friend who's doing the sitcom. I said, would you think Whitney would be a good wife? And he's like, oh, my God, it's a fucking. And then Leanne goes, you can't fall in love with her. <laughs> and I go, oh. I go, I, I won't. And she goes, I know, but she's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> Everyone seems to love her. You can't fall in love with her. And I was like, I won't. And then I was like, hey. Theo Vaughn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Callen. Yep. <laughs> Brendan Schaub. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, anyway, uh, uh, when is your Netflix fucking... <laughs> Give me the fucking date. Netflix, when is it coming What's out? What's the Steve Byrne story? Yeah. Oh, it's racist. <laughs> Please tell it. Then you Please have to tell it. tell it. <laughs> Steve, it's racist. Steve Byrne calls me up. He's with Vince Vaughn, and he goes, Hey, man, I'm with Vince, and we're trying to get these Kogi tacos... Uh, these Korean tacos, but the line is fucking through the roof. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, you know Roy, right? And I went, yeah. And he goes, 
can you text him and get let him know that we're here? And I go, sure. So I text Roy. Roy says, I'll find him. And so I text Steve back, and he, I go, he's looking for you. And Steve goes, I'm looking for him. What does he look like? And I write back, he's Korean. And he goes, I know, but what's he look like? And I go, like you, but more hip hoppy. <laughs> and he's like, no, but describe him. I go, olive skin, black hair, s- s- slight. Uh, like, <laughs> What the fuck, Steve? He's fucking Korean. How do you describe? Yeah. I go, just look for yourself, but like cooler. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he goes, oh, never mind. I found him. Hip hop is a good experience. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you something. When you yeah. say Asian people look alike, do you believe in that stereotype? No, I, t- no, I don't. But that's only because our, <laughs> friends, our best friends are Asian. Oh, I see. But I will tell you this. Our best friends are Asian, and their daughter, um, <laughs> their daughter tried out for the softball team in her school, and she comes home. <laughs> She goes, I'm concerned. I'm not going to make the team. And we go, we're, we're all out of their house. We go, why? She goes, <laughs> because there's another girl, there's another Asian girl that actually really looks like me, mom, and she sucks, and I'm afraid they're going to confuse us. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, okay. So she, and then they go, and they, she goes, actually, the girl's not that bad. So they're equally talented, mm-hmm. and they're the same height, and they look identical. Oh, wow. And so the girl, our friend's daughter made the team, and then she goes, we go, you made the team. She goes, yeah, but I had to go up to the coach and go, did you get the right Asian? <laughs> I don't think, I, I I used to have a joke about that. And then I go, do um, you ever see the same person twice in one day? Like uh-huh. you, And you're like, oh my God, I, that's yeah. weird. Yeah. I saw this Asian lady 15 times in one day. She was everywhere. She was at the cleaners. She was at the nail salon. Yeah. She she all cut me off in traffic three times. Yeah. And so, um, and, then, and then someone told me, so my friend said, you know, it was Asians. Yes. Yeah. You know, we don't all look like. And then I started hanging out with Asian people. I was like, they don't look at all look like. Thank you. Yeah. Like it's, but I will say this. When we were in Scandinavia, I would confuse blonde people like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, it, like same hair color can throw me. I, they, I've done, that's happened with me with a lot of people. Um, what was I going to say about, oh, but I, I, I do have a theory about when they say Asians are bad drivers. Here's my theory. My theory. And it goes back to, I have a theory to, too, but. It, it goes back to, uh, <laughs> to, um. The fact that there are so many Asians. It's not that Asians are bad drivers. It's that there's so many Asians that... <laughs> percentage is higher. Percentage is higher. You're going to run into more bad drivers. Yeah, but the stereotype Asian. is not... It's is, actually not... It's this... derived from here. Yes, exactly, because... So I think... there's not a, like, there's only 4% of the population here. No, you guys are like I 70. have a different theory. No, how many? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, but hold on. Yeah. No, you're not... You're Okay, you're 4% of the population here. Yeah. But you're not... In the middle of the country, you're only in like nine cities, and it's all on the coast. Uh, so that four uh, percent is still high as shit. Right. I have a different theory. Like, go well, ahead. I think that Asians are overskilled. So if you go to the Philippines, I'm telling you, everyone there are no road rules. All the traffic lights are broken, so everyone sort of knows how to use their. When they honk, it's like Morse code. It's yeah. very complex. I've been to Vietnam, same as in yes, Vietnam. Every, everybody's zipping past everybody. Mm. And I think that that level of skill does not apply to the infrastructure here. No, here's what it is. That's, that level of skill. I kind of like that. I, I, like I agree that's, with I like that. that. Yeah. That's that, that. Okay, that's, I, I agree with that. That's good, Kalala. But... Because if you can't drive in the Philippines, you're you're frightened. It's scary, and you. I've never even got a shot to fucking do what you fucking. What I'm saying is, if you take a regular old American white guy, they think he's straight up stoop, stupid when he drives in the. Oh, I would be. I'd be like, have my yeah. blinker on. We don't use a yeah. blinker. You know, I, I, in other countries, they don't care that much about their cars. Like I was. <laughs> what? Just listen to what I'm saying. Let's I go was in there. Thailand. Let's go right? with it. Let's go. I was with in it. Thailand. I saw two you. cab drivers hit each other. They put their head out the window and they looked at their cars and said, okay, it's fine, let's move on. <laughs> and they kept driving. My point is is that it's not that big of a deal. If you, if you get a, like a little scratch here in America, yeah. you pull over, you know what I mean, you call people, yeah, all that stuff. It's true. like, yes, in right. Asia, we don't give that much a fuck about yeah, it. You're yeah, you're right. Are you yeah, dead? Yeah, yeah. Is the car still work? Let's yeah. move on. Yeah, that makes sense. You got sense. shit to do. That makes sense, yeah. Also, I, I want to go to the Philippines bad. You know what? Um, they want you there so badly and I'm not kidding you. I was actually just talking to Mike Bertolina. And you would have the absolute best time. They're going to roll out the most luxurious red carpet. For- we know the guys. We know the guys. I want to go so we know the guys. And they have a really large, amazing venue there. Wait, that's do you like want to do, because uh, I, I never played there either. You want to do a double show there? Yes. I, I will absolutely that. set it up. I'm being real. I'm being very real. I it would love be a that. nudity extravaganza. <laughs> in oh, the we're not leaving that and country. Then bring- <laughs> 
<laughs> but Bert, you got to bring your kids. They would love it there. Really? It's oh yeah, so resort. Fun. The resorts are beautiful. Oh fuck. yeah, you'll love it, dude. I had a buddy. I had a buddy who was a, a TVD producer, and he moved to, I think, the Philippines. I think, and he took over um, one of the big, uh, one of the big cable providers. He, like one of the people who makes all the things, mm -hmm. he took over and was their guy in in Southeast Asia or yeah. Asia, and he will not leave. He is his name's Tim Scott. He's got a picture. It's the funniest fucking picture I've ever seen, and it's not intended to be funny. He started dating a girl, and they went to a big family reunion, and he has a picture with him and their family, but they're all wearing the same shirts, and he is so white. I swear to God, I got a. <laughs> It's the funniest yeah. fucking picture, and it's not intended to be funny at all, but it's just to see this white guy from Minnesota who's fat, like. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Bert, yeah. I had to go to an AA meeting. So, For real? Yeah. I go, look, can I go? You're not going to have a meeting. <laughs> oh. You're not going to go to no meeting. I was, I, but if you ever want to go, I've been to we'll one go before. together. I went to one. You didn't like it? Eh. <laughs> so, the, guy, the guy said, the guy goes, hey, you should stand up and uh, say something. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, stand up. You guys your first time here. Say something. And I was like, okay. So I go to stand up, and the guy in front next to me goes, I'm, I'm going to speak real quick. And he goes, hi, my name's Doc. I'm an alcoholic. And they're like, hi, Doc. And he's like, um, <laughs> oh, I'm having a rough day. Oh, I'm having a rough day. I woke up this morning, sucked my landlord's dick, and then I lit his car on fire. <laughs> and, I like, and I was like, I can't follow that. <laughs> So I fucking left. I was like, fuck that, man. You gotta fucking yeah. to prepare. But if you ever wanted to go, I go to a men's meeting that's like all like kind of. I'd go, but it seems like too much of a commitment. Like I'd go, I would go like, because I have, I definitely have toyed with the idea of stopping drinking a lot. But I. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying I'm, I'm giving you the. An option if you ever need to, because I'm a sober guy. I'm gonna. I always. I'm the kind of brain that thinks. Call me. I'll, if I can't do it myself, I don't want to try. Like I want to do it myself. I, like I know, but and if I stop drinking, and you're not I an alcoholic. Never, if you could do it yourself, you're not an alcoholic. Oh, good. Okay, yeah, good. There we go. Then there we I go. don't need to go. So, um, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> this is the funnest fucking podcast to do in the world. This is. I know what you're trying to do right now. What? Get on again? No, no, no. What you're, what you're trying to <laughs> do times. right now is trying to stretch it out so I miss my fucking meeting. Oh, and then start drinking again. <laughs> Wait, but before at the we end, get there, though, I, I, do, <laughs> I want to address one major thing. The last time you were on here, you had promised Bert and I that we were all going to do a triathlon together. I, oh, yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this. And you, you never can, came through. I practiced. I trained. Yes. You can swim. I can run. You ride the bike. Okay. I want to say this, all right? <laughs> I want to say this. I'll fucking do it, right? Malibu triathlon. Balaka, balaka. Late August, right? Yeah, we're, let's do it. Ma the yeah. Malibu Triathlon. We'll do the celebrity division, yeah. and we'll do the team rally. Yeah, yeah. We'll, let's do it. Let's do it. Someone sign us up. Malibu Triathlon. Yeah, you have to You're tell me right date. Us up, tell me the date. Tell me sign when I up. need to start training. But we have we'll a Peloton. Start today. We you use the Peloton. No, you gotta like get, lock it down. I give September. Me the date for September, September twenty sixth through twenty seventh. Then let's do it. Then, dude. Let's but do it. But you have to sign me up. And we got that. you. We got you. We got you. All right. I got the bike and everything. All right. So but I'm, I don't want you to show up not fit because I will just tell me two you months have, before. This is the date. Let's get going. All right. And I'll fucking Rocky Balboa. Okay. You know how we went. Oh, we when, will when, kill. When let's let's get, Ivan Drago went into the fucking woods. That's what let's get let's get another team to see to go against us. Goes against us. Okay. It's good. There's gonna be a, f a couple of fat guys on there. Like who? We we'll get Sugar to set his team. Sugar, up. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and, yeah. Can you let me know what swimmer they choose though, so yeah. I know what I'm up against? Yeah. Hey, you know what? My my friend thinks he can swim from <laughs> Catalina to Long Beach. <laughs> you fucking. Asshole. I think so. If you're a swimmer, <laughs> if you go at a slow pace, that sounds like something you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah you fucking assholes. Dude, Matthew McConaughey did it. The what? Who's that? Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right. He did the Malibu Triathlon. Uh, Brian Greenberg, your friend. I love Brian. Brian. Steve-O did it with no training. Oh, wow. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's doable. Him. The muscle. Yeah. It's the doable. human muscle. When I did triathlon, it was, it was <laughs> absolutely terrifying. Because yeah. the swim, I, I started leading the swim. Mm -hmm. And I was like, did no one train for this? Yeah. And then I was like, why is, I'm like, how am I going so good? And then we did a <laughs> turn. And everyone kicked it in, and they climbed over me and almost drowned me. Yeah, that's the scary Chipmunk, part, especially in the beginning. Just you know how they Chipmunk. do it in heats. Yeah. But they in the water, at least for me and my experiences, they don't give a shit. They'll run right over. They'll run right over you. Uh, I don't understand that kind of savagery. I'm like, that's why if I was gonna do it again, I'd swim <laughs> off to the side yeah. and just take my time with it. You sometimes you don't face. have a choice, but sometimes that's why you sort of have to get ahead of the pack really early on, and then sort of pace it out afterwards. 
I don't like swimming with too many people around me. You look like Those Eleanor the Roosevelt. Hardest, the hardest I, jog I've ever Eleanor had. Roosevelt, that's what you look like. I did the, I did the swim yeah, and yeah. then the bike. And the bike, I was like, I was like fucking flying. And yeah. when I got to do the run, I was so exhausted. Mm-hmm. I was like. Your face like a Shelter Island oh. statue. Oh, <laughs> you bike ride, Bobby, is going to be a beast. I rode back a bike ride, from ride. Philadelphia to uh, Atlantic City. Atlantic. And uh, it was, I was like, super doable. Holy shit. Ole, ole. It's like I had anal sex with New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking fucker. I crashed my second triathlon. <laughs> For real? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was really sad. I still have a I scar go, on my you knee. Fuckers. What happened? <laughs> I don't know what happened to my bike. I had a shit bike. Oh, yeah. And I crashed. I had road rash from here all the way up to my yeah. knee. It was really bad. What if we get Bobby really into triathlons and that becomes his new addiction? It's like if you put a marshmallow and you put poke two eyes, that's his face. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. What do we have this yeah, week, Gil? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unhelpful advice from Bobby, Kalila. We do emails. Christ. We okay. answer them. You fuck. Okay. Here's a quick one. Recently, my boyfriend brought it to my attention that he likes to be pegged. And I don't know if I have the confidence enough to take that kind of control. Kalila, what would be your advice and people in the room on how to get in the mindset? How do you guys feel about pegging? I heard there's a lot of good old nerves in the prostate that are great for man. Or oh, my, that's my what, dream. What I would love to peg. So I wear a dildo. What is it? I would wear a dildo and I penetrate your butthole. I, I've been dreaming about this for my whole life, and he will never acquiesce, so I can't help you there. Bert? I'm still in the yeah. process. If the yeah. dildo's like this, I swear to God. I would. Yeah, how big of a dildo? <laughs> a you won't even yeah, let yeah. a finger up there. Why not? I hate it. This is my impression of me trying to get Leanne to put her finger in my ass. Ready? She's yeah. giving me a blowjob. I'm what? like this. Oh, that feels great. Uh, let me be the girl. Let me be Leanne. Look at Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 look, at look, look at Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. Don't laugh, though. Yeah, you can't laugh. Don't laugh. <laughs> oh, hey, Ari. Oh, <laughs> hey, Leanne, put your finger in my ass. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because you, because it took you for your lot to ask. It took a lot, right? And then ask. when they say no, no, it's just such the rejection's too oh, much for I'm you. Like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, my bad. You, you stuck. Well, you you stuck your finger in my ass one time. Yeah, and I never, you never let it down. Yeah, you I know. Let it down since because I'm like I have my what my dad has. I my, my dad. I don't know if you know this, but my dad used to walk around the house naked, and he always had toilet paper sticking out of his asshole. We call him the Korean kite. And the thing is, is that um, I swear to God, and I always wondered why, but I have the same thing now. I have anal leakage, just a little bit. I'm I have not a little afraid, bit of anal leak, and I don't like. I don't. Want, to... I don't want like my like. You know what I mean? My juice to be on your Trust finger. Trust that I don't give a shit. I'm yeah. in. I'm in it to win it. I yeah, know, but it's yeah. triathlon. I'm not. You don't have a coffee enema. I'm. I'm ready. I'm ready for the. All fun right. Hey, I let right, you yeah. put something up my ass. <laughs> I can't anything. believe I forgot about this. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, "Mate, hey, you fucked me in the ass." Yeah, I know. But <laughs> I'll do anything. I would probably come this close to sucking dick if it's on TV. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? I'll have it like right in the entrance if it's on TV, and just I'll do that's I, as far I, as I'll go. I will go. I will go hardcore if it's on TV. When we did, we did a reality bites back on Comedy Central. Yeah. Uh, they got kicked off. It was me, Mo Mandel, and Amy Schumer, and we were in bathing suits, speedos. And robes, and it was Michael Ian Black on the other side of the table. And I threw my, he goes, you're kicked off. I'm going to need your Speedo. And I think they thought I would I'd fold. And so I just took my Speedo off, got naked, <laughs> got on the table. Yeah. And I grabbed his chair by with my heels. Yeah. And I pulled his chair into my dick, almost like like he was like <laughs> this. And I go, look at it. And he goes, I'm, a, I'm afraid I'll turn to stone. I go, party you will. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then I did a backspin and stuck it naked. Yeah. <laughs> and I got off that table and I said, I think I might have just ruined my career. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but it's TV, and then I go, I'll do anything on TV. Yeah. God. It's like when I did that, remember that the Comedy Central singing thing with the, uh, Josh Adams? That's the, mm. the hardest. I I've know, ever. but. W- I, I That's on my Instagram. What song got, did you sing? No, 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 no. Fuck mine. When Bobby did that oh. on, I I took my Nest Cam, my <laughs> Nest Cam from our back. That's our, what I saw, yeah I, yeah. I grabbed that footage of me watching Bobby, and it was just. I was crying laughing, and I, I, for some reason I went, I wish I had recorded this, and then Leanne goes, it's on Nest Cam, and I grabbed it, <laughs> downloaded it, and yeah, I fucking yeah. sent it to Bobby, and I posted it on Instagram. You know yeah. we had to write a letter to Rod Stewart to ask permission for Bobby to sing that song? Yeah, I And I remember writing, remember, dear Rod Stewart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And remember we had to that? make some long lie. <laughs> 
when I was in seventh grade, this song helped me find, remember, <laughs> yeah. helped me find confidence in my own body. I went to a party at Rod Stewart's house one time. This is when I first moved to Hollywood, and his daughter was like famous, and it was like throwing like all that Hilton Paris Hilton. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. his daughter the, the motorcycle. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I went to a party at their house one time, and they had it was like it was for like part. It was like kids, but they were it, not Rod Stewart. It was like the kids our age. And they had caviar out. I never had caviar. <laughs> I ate so much caviar <laughs> that they actually removed it from the table <laughs> and took it back. I was eating caviar, and then someone just grabbed it and was like, it's not all yours. <laughs> all right, we got to end it. We got to fuck it. No we solution gotta for the pegging. There's no solution. Right, There's sorry, no solution for the pegging. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I, 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 if, cause I, yeah, I have to go. But you know, <laughs> you know what the thing is is this. <laughs> the thing is this is mm-hmm. that. Um, Burton and I, 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 hopefully some of the things we say today happens. Number one, we do the triathlon marathon. Yeah, thing. I want to do that really Number bad. Number two. Malibu. Hey, you got someone in here, organize it. I, I honestly now don't ever want to go to your house. No, you guys, I want to do, I, 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 I wanna I, do no, a podcast. I, I, we're not going to be there. Yeah, no, no, no. We're not going to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, no, have, no, we'll, because, we'll invite because this, too. I wrote all the names down, all the people <laughs> that you've had at your house. Would it be weird if I had a party and I just invited Asian people? You should do that. And I was yeah, like, yeah. I thought you guys should meet each other. You guys are all my amazing friends. <laughs> Number three, you got you and I are kindred spirits. We we, we are we're, hardcore. We're, we're very similar in many ways, and um, and this is you know you and I could talk forever. I could talk to I could do and, this and podcast. So enter- enter- I wish my podcast was this fun. This is no, it's <laughs> fun with you. It's not always this fun. It's fun when you're here. Who's who's been a bad guest? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we God, haven't had a lot of bad guests. Uh, we've had a couple. Luckily. But- We've had, you in know the what beginning, it, we, we were... We, you know what's hard? I'm not going to say our any fault. Names. It's not the guest's fault. It's, you know, I need people to add information. So I've had people on where I ask them something, and they say yeah. maybe two or three words. And they're waiting and for the And then have to rev question. up again, and, you know, and I don't like that. Turn the cameras off. I'll oh, wait, you. there's one more thing I wanted to tell you. What? Fucking bitch, oh. let me go. <laughs> That's what it's I wanted to tell you. I'd been saving this. Yeah, yeah. What? So you had someone on your podcast that is my ultimate life idol um kimmy swimmy oh my god Werner. yes so i free dive and she is somebody that i like my entire life is modeled around trying to be kimmy werner let's go let's go to let's go to hawaii and she just had a baby but I know, let's yes. go to hawaii and free dive with her i would love okay to. i love her so much hold never on gonna, hold gonna, on gonna hold happen. on this will totally happen never gonna happen this will totally happen <laughs> let's go to let's go I, I have kimmy's number i know kimmy really well yeah we'll go down We'll go down and she'll teach me. I don't, I've never, I've done it a couple times. I've gone spear fishing a little I, bit. That's another thing I want to tell you. We should go free dive. Can you should get your lobster license and you should come with me and I'll take you out to go um, get some lobsters. A hundred percent, one hundred percent. Well, lobster season's almost it's, over, it's, it's but just talk. It's just talk. <laughs> <laughs> it is people talking. Bobby, it, it, how did how do you how are you as someone so active <laughs> and and you're and like <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Zero's gonna happen. Zero's gonna happen. You know, um, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna have Bertolina. I'm oh gonna tell gosh. Bertolina we're gonna shoot it for all things comedy. Absolutely. And we'll go down. We'll go spear fishing, free diving mm-hmm. with Kimmy. She was like, I, it, within a day, I can get you to hold your breath for like two minutes. And I was like, Oh wow, I can she hold my is breath. Amazing. I can hold my breath Next for a, level. a minute thirty right now. Wow, that's really good, actually. You it's know great. what? He actually holds his breath very, very oh, long. His long, long, long capacity long is better than mine. Me love you a long time. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me oh hello, <laughs> hello. Me love you a long time. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Keep talking. See what <laughs> Keep talking. We'll see let what you happens. go. We'll yeah, let you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I love you guys. Thanks so much, Bert. Thank this was you. so much this fun. This was a blast. No, my, it's not an album. I'm a professional. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's so rude. It's a special you fucked up. <laughs> it's, uh, hey, big boy. It's on streaming on Netflix right now. Go watch it. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, the Birdie Boy Tour, go to BertBertBert.com. Yeah. Great. Bert, Bert, Bert. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Tiger Belly with the one and only Burt Kreischer. Uh, shout out to George Kimmel for bringing ice in the room. Uh, unfortunately, Burt did not use it, so he wasted a whole bag. <laughs> uh, we want to give a big shout out to our sponsors, Hams Blue Apron, Tushy, and My Bookie. Baldness can be optional. Get your first month of Hams for free. Go to forhims.com slash belly. Should we pop one down? Okay, I'll do a check out this week's menu and get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash belly. Hey, wait, Andres, why don't you read number three? But take your time, huh? Take hey guys, your time. Join millions of happy <laughs> Hello Tushy customers <laughs> right now and have a clean, but... <laughs> Keep going. I love you. Dude, guys, are asshole. Okay. 
join millions of happy hello tushy customers right now and have a clean butt yeah. with every flush for a limited time. Go to hellotushy.com slash tiger belly to get 10% off. And visit mybookie.ag and use the promo code belly for 50% off deposit bonus. For 50% deposit uh-huh. deposit bonus. I don't know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> get your tickets to see the Slap King Live, guys. You have to see Bobby live. If you haven't, you're doing yourself a disservice. He'll be at Houston, Texas, March 27th to 29th. Dallas, Texas, April 3rd through 5th. Andres, why don't you read the third one? <laughs> <laughs> but add, uh, say it in Spanish. Calusa, Calusa California. California. Yeah. April 17th at the Calusa Casino. Ooh, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, San Diego, California, April 30th to May 2nd at American Comedy Club oh, in Ontario, yeah. California, May 8th to 10th on the Ontario Improv. Go to BobbyLeeLive.com and grab them before they're gone. And also, guys, like today's unhelpful advice question, you can also ask one by going to AdviceUnhelpful at gmail.com. Remember, typically if you keep them nice and tight and um, not too long, those have a better chance of being selected. George, give me shout-ins, shout-outs. My buddy Andres with the great accent uh, coming in hot. And who is on? Who is he to you? Well, uh, a lot of people don't know who he is. They might have heard him on Bad Friends reading a scene. Uh, you might have heard Bobby talk him about a little bit about him. Um, Andres is my buddy from film school out in New York. What way school back. is that? Columbia University in the city of New York, the only Ivy League. You mean school Cob- with you a- mean Columbia College at Chicago? No, 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 no. Columbia University in the city of New York, uh, Chicago, I have Illinois. A lot more, a lot more student debt than those asshats that went to Columbia College. <laughs> Shots fired to Columbia College, yes, Chicago. Uh, the only yeah. Columbia University, only Ivy League with a film school. Ba 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 boom. <laughs> Fairly Brothers went there, but they did the writing program rather than the. <laughs> but uh, oh, Andres is a director. Would you say yeah, a director? And yeah. what kind of films? Where He's can we catch your films? Talented. If there's any films out there, where well, can we find them? I'm about to direct my first feature film. Woo! So mm. Can you give us a little? It. Can you give the Tiger Belly Slept King a little taste? What is the log line? Oh, interesting. Well, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I I have not written this yet. <laughs> this is like mm, no. It's called The Echoes, and it's about it's a horror, a psychological horror film, and it's about like a father trying to bring back to life his dead family whoa guys if that's not the voice of a director in an interview <laughs> i don't know what is you can follow tiger belly at tiger belly on instagram at the tiger belly on twitter uh you can also follow george at george underscore kimmel andre that i don't need following wow what a director see he he's a director yes you do you would have made this film uh, 10 go. years ago yeah. if you had it. okay well there we go george what's his uh instagram handle uh, probably andres rosende i don't know it's Probably. True. You can follow everything Kalila at Calamity K, everything Bobby Lee at Bobby Lee Live, and you can give me a follow at Gilbits. And guys, once again, we have our meme contest of the week. You have to make a meme uh, based on today's episode, which is episode 237 on Burt Kreischer. So take your favorite moment and give us a meme. And all you have to do to submit to that and uh, possibly win a prize, uh, you will win a prize if you are selected, is hashtag the photo or meme, uh, hashtag Tiger Belly on our Instagram and on Twitter, and we'll select from those. Guys, we love you. Have a good night.